Hi. Well, I'm excited. I just received this shipment from Phil Edwards of Philly Plains in England. And it's uh, a couple of wooden molding planes that I ordered quite a bit ago. So I thought I would open the box on camera and take the planes for a test spin and let you see what I see. I placed this order in August of 2014. So just about to the day, it took eight months to get this order. It's a long time, so you, uh, you need patience. <laughs> but all, all good things take time, don't, don't they? Or so they say. I know it's back in 2012, it took about two months to get an order. So I need to think when it's going to be like two years from now. Get your orders in. <laughs> uh, he's just, uh, Phil's thanking me for the order. Letting me know that the irons are sharp. Their uh, planes are waxed. And a bit of help how to get everything um, tuned up. And since I've never used these kinds of planes before, I, I will read this. So I got a, a mini panel razor and an eighth inch uh, side bead motor. I noticed that the mini, the mini um, razor is no longer being offered by him, or at least I, I couldn't find it on his website. His uh, business card. Smells of uh, freshly applied finish. But I think he said it was just uh, wax, but uh, of course wax has uh, usually mineral spirits is involved. This looks like one of the one of the blades. It's nothing like getting, getting something that was made by an individual, not mass produced. Okay, this is for, uh, this is the bead. Definitely has a coating on it, rust prevention. I'm in uh, Southern California, so uh, fortunately, I don't have. To, I can leave my equipment outside, and it won't rust. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but looks beautiful. I had. Um, I had him put my initials on the end and then just to give it some 
uniqueness for me, I had to make the wedge in mahogany. So that's cool. The panel razor, I believe, has two blades. When you order these planes, you have to give a 25% down payment at the beginning. You pay the rest upon delivery or prior to delivery. And, um, and then he sent me a picture of these planes on his uh, workbench, just uh, ready to be packaged up. So it's kind of nice. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, take a little break here and uh, clean up the blades, assemble them, just do a little bit of reading, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, zoom in a little bit, show you them assembled, and then we'll give them a little spin. Okay, well, I've cleaned up the irons, oiled them, and uh, put everything together and given them a test run and they're working great. So I decided to demonstrate first uh, the panel raising plane. So I'm just going to use a bit of pine and I'll do the end grain first. It really works surprisingly well. Particularly this uh, knicker, knicker in the front which scores the cross grain and uh, really, you really end up with a, uh, a nice cut. Uh, so as I begin using this it'll be cutting more in the front and then slowly the, the shape will progress and then Towards the end, the knicker will start to uh, make its cross grain cut. Now the knicker just started making a scribe line. beauty of these wooden planes is um, the body is the stop so once they start stop cutting you're done 
There. Let me zoom in. You can see the quality of the cut. And um, this really wasn't, uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't seem to be getting, the shavings aren't getting uh, stuck. So uh, the plane's working beautifully. So hopefully you can see the quality of, of the cut. The shoulder, shoulder looks beautiful. This is cross grain. I don't think you can be expecting any better than that. Um, you did get some breakout here, but that's to be expected. That's why you always um, shape your end, end grain pieces first before shaping the long grain. So just for kicks, I'll, um, I'll finish off the long grain side and we'll see, see how this uh, corner looks. Nothing like using a hand plane to shape wood. Starting to cut the shoulder now. Beautiful. Let's take a look at this corner. Well, what do you think? It looks pretty good to me. This, you know, probably some light sanding on this, um, on the end grain. Feels pretty smooth though. And Beautiful miter corner. Shoulders look beautiful. I love it. It's going to be a fun plane to use. Okay, it's time to give this uh, the beading plane a run. I'm just going to um, put a bead on the other edge of this board. And this really goes quicker than the, the panel raising. I'm going to start from this end. I 
I have a fairly heavy cut set. It kind of goes without saying, beating planes are not meant to be used on end grain. You won't be happy with what it does. And that's it. And this is an eighth inch bead. Because the kind of the kind of work that I'll be doing with these hand planes will be in a smaller scale. So I thought the eighth inch would be fine. Let's take a closer look. Well, here's the bead. Hopefully you can see the, the quality. It uh, finishes beautiful. This is gonna be my go-to tool for, for uh, beading edges. And it's, it's such a simple profile to make and it, it really does snazz up your work. I love it. Okay, so I thought I would take take the beading plane apart just to um, give you a little closer look at the fit and, fit and finish of the tool. I got the wedge, and again I had him make the wedge out of uh, mahogany, just, just to be a little, just to be different. Identify it. The plane is mine. Here's the blade. Now you can um, I'll, I'll zoom in a bit, even closer, closer on the blade in a little bit. Um, but you know, the, I look at the the highest quality iron that I see comes out of comes out of Veritas. Uh, their all their their tooling is just um, really manufactured to to high standards. Probably after that would be. Lee Nielsen, uh, but this is a handmade tool. It's it's clearly been touched by a by a person. Uh, I I can tell looking at this that there there are, are manufactured aspects to it. I'm sure the the body of the plane is. I, I imagine that's um, milled with machinery. And. Um, the, the, I think this is uh, called the boxing, um, the, the pr hardened, uh, I think, think it's boxwood, right? Uh, a hard, much harder wood that, uh, that the profile is made from. Uh, I imagine that's milled. But then, um, but then there's hand tool marks all over this plane, all the shaping. Obviously the all the, the slots made for the, the iron, that's clearly uh, finessed by hand. You know, that, that's, uh, that's why I bought this. I bought it as a, as a tool made by a person. And um, just, like, just like your own furniture that you make, it's not supposed to look like it came off an assembly line. So, so I'm I'm really happy with this. Uh, again, this is uh, this is beach, and I'm, I'm just from memory. I'm thinking this is boxwood. I, I think that's what they used for uh, for the the molding uh, profile. It's it's not beach, whatever it is. Let's take a look, close close look at this uh, knife. All right, here is the iron for the uh, the beating plane, and uh, I mean I think you can probably clearly see that the fit and finish is not what you would get from say a you know a highly manufactured plane from Veritas and Lee Nielsen etc. 
you know, this this part is uh, looks kind of warped. Uh, not, but you know, cl clearly that doesn't matter. Only the wedge wedges against part of that down here, down here, and um, you know where it counts at the at the tip. It's been polished, and again the, the profile is a bit bit on the coarse the coarse side, I would say. Um, but again, for you know molding planes, they don't need to have the fit and finish of a something like a smoothing plane, and uh, which actually is good for us in terms of sharpening. You don't have to worry about trying to sharpen this like you would with a smoothing plane. So all in all, I'm happy. And the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And it uh, really creates, in this case, a beautiful uh, bead. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of these uh, new moaning planes from Philly Planes, made by Phil Edwards. Um, I'm really going to enjoy these. Thanks for stopping by.